I hope you had a good lunch. I was too nervous to have to have mine actually. Yeah. Okay, this thing can start. Okay, today I'm going to talk about uh, WordPress scalability. Let me introduce myself first. I'm Wen Yan, right? I have been a WordPress developer for a couple of years only, but I've been with PHP for quite a long time. Okay, I think uh, more than 30 years ago when PHP was PHP 2. I think so, PHP 2, right? So, uh, okay, I think I revealed my age to you guys also. <laughs> and it's okay, hold on. Uh, the stumbling blocking this thing. Okay, I come from uh, this company we call iVideo Smart. Next slide. Okay. Okay, we deal with all things videos. Right? We do video streaming, we do video hosting, video transcoding, we host video sites, and we also uh, do video monetization. Okay, so if you want to find out more, you can talk to me and my colleagues over there during the tea session. Right? Okay, so why WordPress? I think all of us here, I don't need to sell to you why WordPress. I think all of us is very happy with WordPress, right? Those are the few, those are just a few of uh, the, the reason why we use WordPress, okay? So it has plugins for everything, it has themes for almost every kind of presentation, it, it, every hosting service, almost every hosting service supports it and it's very easy to use. My wife who doesn't know tech knows how to use it, so it's very easy to use, right? But uh, why not WordPress? Okay. Because it's the most popular CMS, right? we know that it's prone to hacking. Right? And I think earlier on we had a session on security. I missed it, sorry. I think uh, by now you should know better how to secure your WordPress. But WordPress inherently is very, very prone to uh, uh, security leaks. And because uh, of uh, poorly written plugins and all that, and uh, a lot of uh, a lot of plugin writers actually focus on getting the job done without actually considering the underlying security and all that. I think all of us knows that we have been I have been a culprit of one of those few one of those plugins as well. Okay, where you put it out there, then you realize you know you you get a lot of uh, a lot of uh, hacking attempts, right? So we all know that. Ah, the next thing. Oh, I didn't do that. Oh, okay. It's not Brad. Oh, okay. The wrong color being used. Okay. The next thing is that is WordPress not scalable? Yeah, WordPress is not scalable, right? Or is it? Is WordPress really not scalable? Ah, you blocked the not scalable part. <laughs> ah, WordPress not scalable. Is it really not scalable? Okay. Typical WordPress implementation we all know is either a single box, uh, we put everything in a single box, database, the WordPress, everything in a single box, or some of us a bit more uh, savvy, we, we implement WordPress in one box and we use an external database. Right. Most of us, I think we use shared hosting where a lot of uh, WordPress sites is being hosted into one cluster of uh, servers. Right. So this kind of implementation is very hard to scale, right? Have you ever experienced a time where your WordPress site goes down, uh, especially when your WordPress site is uh, very, very popular, then you realize when there's a spike or everything goes down, everything starts crawling. We have experienced so many of these heart-stopping kind of uh, moment, right? And uh, it is through quite a lot of pain that we, that we realize that uh, WordPress, if we just implement it, we will just install it and use it just out of the box, it cannot really take much load. Okay. So, what are the ways to overcome the, this uh, problem with WordPress not being able to take much load? Right? You can scale upwards, you can use the most powerful server right, and pay for it, then maybe you can scale. But the issue with this is that your WordPress site might not, might not be using all your CPU's power all the time. 
right? So there will be times where where people are sleeping, right? If let's say you're only serving a certain a certain region in the world, so those people will be sleeping. Then your 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 high cost box will be sitting there idling, not doing anything. So this is one of the problem with uh, scaling upwards, right? And uh, for a typical single box setup, in our experience, you cannot take more than fifty concurrent requests. I'm not sure whether you guys agree or not, but that's our experience when we set up an EC2 instance in uh, Amazon Web Services. When there's 20 plus uh, re concurrent requests, our CPU starts hitting 100%, right? But we, then when we look into the problem, we realize that actually the PHP part is okay, but it is a, it, it is a database server that is trashing. So the database server is the one that is, uh, cannot take this load, okay? We'll, okay. I think I, I need to explain a little bit on the database server later as well. Okay, so can we do this? Can we do this? Right. You will see that there's three nodes, three PHP nodes. Can I have a show of hands? How many of us have actually implemented this? Well done. Right. Okay. We implemented that as well, but we went through a lot of pain. So actually today's uh, uh, session, we wanted to share with you guys, for those of you who have not implemented this before, that this is possible. It is possible, but we want to share with you uh, the things to look out for because we went through a lot of pain to do this. I think the gentleman over there will realize that, right? Okay. Okay. What is the issue with this implementation? Right. PHP is uh, session-based. A WordPress is session based. WordPress uses a lot of session cookies and all that. So these are stored in sessions. So if you have multiple nodes, multiple PHP nodes, you realize that session, each node will store their own PHP session. Right? And when a load balancer, okay, I think I'm going ahead of myself. Let me go to the next. Uh, let me talk about the, the problems with uh, WordPress first, huh? uh, the, the WordPress cluster first. Right, PHP session is one of the issue because uh, the sessions is being stored in different nodes. So when the next request comes in, right, it will not come back to the same session. Right, and the next thing is that you WordPress we know that we have this uploads folder is a very common uh, non knowledge for all WordPress developers. There's uploads folder where you store all your media files. If you spread your load across different nodes, when you upload a media file, it will go to one of the nodes, but two other nodes won't get your file. The next time when someone requests for that particular asset, the asset won't be there. Right? So there's this problem as well. Right? And of course, we need the load balancer to balance out the load across the three, the three nodes. Right. Okay. We wanted to share with you guys how we implement this uh, this Cluster WordPress cluster platform. Okay. What we did is that we, of course, use a load balancer, all right, to round robin the uh, request across multiple nodes, and we made use of nginx and PHP. Each of those nodes actually contains nginx as our uh, uh, web service interface. Right, then PHP as the app logic. Right. And then to solve the problem of uh, having different uploads folder in each of these nodes, we actually use a centralized file system. And that file system we use is NFS. We have tried several things like the GlusterFS or SSHFS, different implementation. We wanted to use uh, what Amazon has, which is the Elastic File Service, I think that is the name, but it was not readily available in Singapore. So at the time, what we tried, we tried several of them, and we found that NFS works best. Right. So if you wanted to do something like this, NFS is a workable solution. We, have, we, are, we are using it right now, okay? and it's serving us very, very well. Right. And then to store the PHP session, again, we centralize everything. Right, and store them in a Redis server. Okay, I will be showing you how this can be done. Okay, 
the pros and cons of this implementation. Okay, the pros. We have been using this for the past one year plus, and there's no issue at all with serving more than, uh, with scaling up to 50 nodes. There was one time when we scaled this thing up to 50 nodes. Instead of three over there, you see we scale up to 50 nodes running on a single database server, right? And we are able to scale and take 1,000 requests, concurrent requests. Right. From 20 concurrent requests, we increase it to 1,000 concurrent requests. Yes. Okay. What I want to share with you guys is that the database is still trashing at this point. Right. But because, of the, because we managed to scale out PHP, the PHP nodes, each PHP node is able to take the load and it waits. At least it doesn't trash. The PHP doesn't trash. Okay. When you have a single node and your, P and your database is trashing, you know what happens? All the PHP requests start coming in, they will queue up, right? They will queue up all the PHP requests and your PHP node, your PHP epic, your PHP server starts trashing. Your database is trashing, yes, but because your PHP server is trashing, you start seeing all the 500, the, the HP, HTTP 500, right? Your, your customers start seeing PH, uh, HTTP 500 uh, server error, right? Whereas when you scale it out, you scale it out, your web server still works. Why? I mean, your, your, your website still works because uh, the PHP is not trashing. It just waits for the database to be available. And when the request comes back, when the data comes back, your PHP will just serve the web page. It just slow down the web page, but it won't trash. Right? So that's what our experience is. Right? So there was one time when our, our we, had, we had about four nodes. Then we never expected the, the traffic to spike so quickly because the uh, one of our partner was running some events and everybody started to access the website and it starts trashing. We see that the database is trashing, then the PHP site is all trashing. Then we immediately, well, the good thing about AWS is that you can just create new nodes, right? new, new, new EC2 instances and we spread it across and immediately the traffic, the, the traffic started to go normal again. In fact, it helps. In fact, the database doesn't trash that much anymore. It doesn't reach 100%. So it does help to scale out the PHP nodes in this manner. Okay. And what we experience is that it's very easy to uh, scale out or scale in. You call it scale in? Yeah, right. You can either remove or add nodes without any issue at all. Okay, this is, uh, this is in, we use AWS for this. So uh, we just start up an instance add it into the uh, load balancer as one of the nodes to be round robined, right? And it just works like that without an issue at all, right? It's very easy. And whenever we find that the load is, uh, is not that high, we just take out because every node is cost to us. So when the traffic is not as heavy, right? We just take out the nodes to save cost, right? That is very easily done, okay? What is the con, right? The pros and cons, right? So what is the disadvantage of uh, using this implementation? Okay, the implementation that I've shown you guys here doesn't take into account uh, the single point failure in the centralized file system, which is the NFS or the database or Redis. If any of these fail, the whole site goes down. But our motivation is not for HA, it's not for high av availability, but more for uh, Scalability, right? We want to be able to take the load. So in order to have HA as a total, it's a totally different scenario altogether. You have to make sure that you have uh, uh, your NFS, my, uh, your database, and your and your Redis server. They are all HA. I mean that is another another talk, right? Okay. But I think to do that is not that difficult, right? You just need to get some expert to help you. <laughs> and I'm not an expert. On that, okay. But uh, to let you guys know, we have been running this for one one year plus. No issue with NFS or database or Redis server failing. Not at all. Not a single instance, right? Whereas we can scale up and down very easily, and that helps us a lot. Okay. I think now you guys will be interested in the gory details, but I have to warn you guys. Uh, you may not appreciate this because uh, it's a lot of gory, gory details. 
Okay, I'm going to go into the what we did. Uh, well, the is it? Can you see that? Cannot. I'm so sorry. This is uh, wrong. Okay, what I'm trying to show you here is the uh, engine X configuration needed to needed to spread out the PHP nodes. Okay. Maybe let me let me change the color if you don't mind. Let me change the color of the fonts. Give me a moment, huh? let me change it. Is it? Okay. I just go where? Okay. Okay, let me go back to the slide. It's better, right? Because I changed it to the black color. I will let you have some time to soak in all the implementation. This, I think the gentleman, you can appreciate that, right? These are very, very system stuff, right? And we went through a lot of pain to discover, well, not really to discover, we try and error, and then we finally got it to work, okay? So this is the exact configuration that we have on most of our Nginx, uh, our PHP nodes, okay? Okay, so basically, basically we are saying that when when a PHP request comes in and nginx sees that it's a PHP request, it will it will just call the one the PHP node to serve out this uh to to compile to 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 serve out this request, right? It's as simple as that. This is a very uh, usual setting in PHP. Are you able to see this? Okay. This is the part where you need to take note of. Let me try to. Wait. The session, PHP session, this is the crucial part. Right. If you look at a normal PHP dot ini file, you will see that the sessions are saved into local file. Now, we just change this. Instead of saving the local file, we save it into a Redis server, two-liner, right? There's four lines over here. The third and fourth line are being commented out, replaced by the first and second line, right? So instead of saving to local uh, file, session file, we store it into Redis, two-liner, but took us quite some time to discover this, just this, right? And then the NFS. Each of these PHP nodes will also, each of these PHP nodes is actually an NFS client where you designate a folder, which in this case is an uploads folder, as an NFS mount. You mount the folder in the NFS drive, right? So you, all of you are mounting the same folder on an NFS server over here, right? Then, of course, on the NFS side, what we do is that we install an NFS server and then we designate a folder as a shared folder to be mounted by all the PHP nodes. Okay. By doing things this way, you are able to centralize all your files into one location. Right? So all your PHP nodes see the same file, see the same assets, see the same PHP files. Right? Okay, but one thing to note is that this NFS server does have a a delay, a delay in um, updating uh, the file, the, the the notes, right? For example, if someone up, if let's say this note over here uploaded an asset file into the uploads folder, is being stored here, it takes about a few seconds for the rest of the notes to see it, right? So if your website is uh is very high, well. You need 
everything to be very quickly updated. So NFS may not be the solution for you. There are other solutions which I'm not aware of right now. Right? <laughs> this thing works for us because uh, our website is not that kind of high demand kind of website. So we are able to take that hit of a few seconds update, right? Right. So we leave the question to later, it's Q&A later. Okay, let me go through this thing, it's about to end. Okay, well, even with this implementation, we find that, uh, yes, the we can take about 1,000 requests, right? But the issue with that is that the, it is still calling the database. Uh, every request that comes in will still <coughs> work the database, right? So there's a lot of uh, database calls in and out of the MySQL server. And during the peak period, you know, I want to share with you this painful uh, experience that we have is that we the engineers have to be there to see if there's a spike. When there's a spike, they qu quickly add more nodes, right? Add more nodes. At one time, we add up to 50 plus 60 nodes, right? Then the then it solved the problem, so we are able to take two thousand, one thousand, two thousand con con concurrent uh, requests coming in. So uh, we are always sweating, especially every weekend, right? It's burned because the weekend is a time when everybody access our website. So we are there to to wow, to add more nodes when the spike goes up, and then when the spike comes down, we have to remember to take out the nodes. If not, you'll be we'll be checking up our our costs, right? So we are always sitting down there to add and. We remove nodes, right? And of course, uh, let me sell a bit of, uh, do, do a bit of selling for AWS here. AWS, they do have the this thing called the auto scaling. Auto scaling. They have this auto scaling thing that you're able to configure. They will automatically scale, right? But the issue with that is that when they add one node, it takes it takes up to twenty minutes for the node to be active. By that time, the spike went down already, so war over. So we can't do that. Well, we can't do that. We have to manually add the nodes. That's a lot faster, right? So that is what what we did the last time. So we still have this problem, even though we're able to scale out and scale in, we still have the problem of having to sit there to add nodes. Of course, we can add one hundred nodes and just leave it there running. It will just run, but we'll be paying so much, right? Right. So it's not feasible. So the next thing we did is that we realized that actually our website mostly is serving static contents, right? We don't we don't really uh, uh, serve a lot of people that 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 need them to become subscriber and log in, have their own own content. So every time when they serve the landing page or whatever page category page, you know that it's always the same, the same page, right? So what we did is that we just do caching, right, right, and. What we did is that we used the uh, fast. Okay, can you see that? Okay, we use a fast CGI caching. Fast CGI cache within Nginx. Everything is Nginx. Nginx, we love Nginx. Nginx is everything we need, right, to be able to serve out a very, very uh, 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 a server that can take high load, right. So we use uh, fast CGI caching, and you will see from the diagram over here. Actually, everything stores into this. When a, when a request comes in, we fetch from the database and then we store a copy within the disk. The next time the same request comes in for the same particular page, we just take from this. And you know what? With this, with this, we are able to handle ten thousand concurrent load, right? Ten thousand concurrent load, and our CPU was running at six percent, six percent with ten thousand concurrent load, uh, concurrent request. So, caching is really the way to go. But the disadvantage with caching is that once you cache, you cannot have dynamic data. For example, you can't be loading a page that say, hello, uh, John. Because if you cache that page, hello, John, the next person that comes in, you will see hello, John. Right? So it's not feasible. So if let's say you're, you're running an e-commerce e website that needs, that needs to have dynamic data, this solution doesn't work for you. We are currently working on another solution that takes advantage of caching as well as injecting dynamic information into the site. Okay. That is another talk again, right? We are still working with that, right? Of course we invite comments. If you have any comments you would, could help us all the more we'd be very happy to hear that. Right. 
Okay, I think uh, that is all I have to say for WordPress scalability. Basically, today what I did is that I share with you guys what works for us. What works for us? I'm very sure there are better solutions out there, right? But this works for us, and we are sharing it with you. So, uh, yes, it's a bit more system than WordPress, a bit more system administration than WordPress. I hope uh, we can all appreciate that to know that WordPress actually is n is scalable. You just need to do some tinkering. Okay. So, should we have a Q and A? Q and A. Yeah. Any question? I may not be able to answer every question, but whatever I know, I can share with you. Whatever works for us. Yes. Uh, about the notes that you say you can switch it in and switch it off, right? Yes. So I'm just wondering, because AWS will cost you, although the notes is switched off, unless you terminate it. So uh, yeah. are you going to set it up all the way yes. again before you switch it on? That's Correct. a lot of work. That's a very good question. At one time, we actually set up 50, 50 EC2 instances, but we turn it off. That means you shut it down. We didn't terminate it, we shut it down. When, you, when the node is being shut down, you're not paying for the nodes. You may be paying for the storage, but the storage is minimal because our storage is in NFS. Right? We only had about 8 gigabyte for every node, so there's very li little cost to us. Even though we run 50 to 100 nodes, we are, we are not paying anything. Right? So we can just leave it there, and then when, at the time when there's spikes, we just attach the EC2 to the load balancer to round up in, uh, all, all the requests. Right? Correct. That's what we did. Right. Wow. But after we do the caching, now we are only running three nodes. And it's taking 10,000 concurrent hits at a spike. No problem at all. It hits about 10% CPU. Right? And the database doesn't trash. So that's the beauty of this uh, caching. Right. Hi. I, I heard about some people setting up uh, WordPress with Heroku. Uh, would that be an alternative to, to this? And what would be the pro and cons? Uh, I, I didn't really get You can repeat that in WordPress again? With Heroku, the, the company purchased by Salesforce, uh, that's uh, to, to build app on top of it without taking. Heroku, sorry, yeah. Oh, I'm not so familiar with that. Is it a web hosting company? No, no. Like manage VPS. They provide like platform as a service kind of hero. You can easily like host your app there. Yeah. So what's your question? I would like uh. to like share my knowledge if I can. Yeah. Uh, actually, but not that much because Heroku would manage the things for you. But the technology or the infrastructure he told about Heroku is not that much into that much like all these things. But yeah, for a like mid-level user or hero could be a solution, but not that level. To be able to put that off, you need to be able to quickly a uh, provision more servers on the fly. Well, not on the fly. I mean, very quickly provision more servers and attach it to the system. Right. Okay, I would love to know more about your infrastructure. That what PHP version you are using? What again? Okay. PHP version. What PHP, PHP version, version you are using? Oh, uh, we, we were using PHP 5.6, but now we have upgraded to 7.1. But there's not much. Well, a lot of people have been saying that PHP 7 is a lot faster. It is faster, but it's not that much faster. Yeah. Right. With this implementation, actually, we don't see any performance gains gain there in PHP. Yeah. And have you tried like MariaDB and MySQL, both performance optimization or something, or benchmark that? Uh, my have you tried uh, MariaDB or something? My, my ELDB. MariaDB. Oh, MariaDB. Yeah. Uh, we mostly use MySQL, MySQL. MySQL DB. Oh, okay. yeah. hmm. Is Ma MariaDB better, faster? Uh, we have found that MariaDB is better. It's an actual and open source fork of MySQL, yes. Yes. MySQL and we have seen that it's uh, at least 1.5 times faster than MySQL. 
Thank you so much. Yeah. Actually, we're looking at uh, optimizing MySQL as well. Actually, because what we do, what we did is that we provision an RDS server. We just use whatever the default that is that is there. But lately, one of our colleague has has been looking at how to optimize MySQL. Actually, MySQL it depends on what you want to do. If you want to optimize it for reading, there's one type of optimization. You want to optimize it for MySQL. Like uh, is good for read and InnoDB is good for yes, like yes. write. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we are looking at that to optimize MySQL server as well. Okay. So actually, it's not that WordPress cannot scale. In fact, if you look at it, if you look, if you are using Drupal or whatever CMS, they won't be able to scale as well. You have the same issue. Right, but you can do the same thing over here, not just for WordPress, for anything else that is PHP. As long as you take, as long as you take care of the session, you centralize the storage, the file system itself centralize it. You can scale any work PHP application. You can just scale with this implementation. We have used the implementation for another uh, another uh, of our app developed using Laravel. Right, it scales as well. So it just works. This thing it works. Right. Do we have more questions for Mr. Cock? Right. All right. If not, thank you so much, thank Mr. Cock. Thank you Kok. very much.